Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to the show. You're here with me, Amaya, on yet another brand new morning. Of course, it's great to be with all of you in your living rooms, bringing the best of what's happening here in the country, as well as current issues that you should be aware of right to your doorstep. And it's always nice to be a part of your morning. And we know that you look forward to different topics that we bring you on the show. And this morning, we'll be dealing with something that many of you may have been familiar with. So maybe because you yourself have tried to be a part of this particular process or you know relatives or friends who have been a part of this process. And I'm speaking about migration. Now, this is something that many families and uh, businesses and professionals opt to do for various reasons and migrating to Australia has become uh, something of a trend these days I guess you could say in the Colombo areas as well as the suburbs and in some of the large cities here in Sri Lanka and there are always proper channels and proper methods that you have to follow when it comes to this sort of migration and uh, there are serious issues that have cropped up in the recent past because of the illegal migration that happens here in Sri Lanka and it's something that needs to be addressed it has been addressed very much in the past few uh, months and in the past few years but it still persists and the important thing is to bring this number of illegal migrations down to zero and to encourage everyone to follow the proper channels when it comes to pursuing a new life because you don't want to start off on a bad note right so on that note we have a very special consultant he's an expert consultant from Australia he's the director of Australian migration and citizenship and he's here with us on the show to give you all the information you need to take the correct to know the correct procedure to take this next big step in your life and we have with us mr. Peter Loughton good morning Peter good morning Amaya how it's are you lovely today? To have you. I'm, I'm fine and how are you very well thank you another fine day in Colombo of course of course, I'm here. I've heard, now you've been here for about a week, so I've heard that you've I been have. enjoying yourself in Colombo these I days. have, yes. And you've also been holding a few seminars on Australian yes. migration, because uh, do you find that uh, although the information is available for anyone who looks it up, that many people are not aware about the correct procedure for migrations? Very much, and I think the internet is a great source, mm -hmm. it's a great resource, it allows you to obtain first-hand information, but it also sometimes makes people a little bit dangerous to themselves because they'll take the internet as gospel and they'll go along a pathway and then find that when they get to the end of the pathway it doesn't actually lead to a visa. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's always a caution that we give to people to mm -hmm. say, use the internet, it's fantastic, but don't rely on it totally. All right, so it's very important to get the correct information firsthand. And I think you know, we have had a few cases of illegal migrations happening here in Sri Lanka. I'm sure the number has reduced now due to increased awareness. But before we go into this serious issue, I mean, first maybe you could explain to us exactly why it's called illegal. What is illegal migration? What constitutes as that? Well, that's also a very vexed question. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, politicians uh, have a definition of it. The United Nations have the definition, has a definition <laughs> of it. Everybody seems the to have The US a, these days is yes, having a very course. big problem with Ev it. Yes. yes, everybody seems to have a definition of it. Uh, in reality, um, to be illegal probably means that you're in the country and your visa has expired <laughs> and you become uh, what we call an unlawful non-citizen. Mm -hmm. If you're coming into the country to claim a political asylum of some description, under the UN Charter, then technically you may not necessarily be unlawful because you're using a right that the UN has, um, has bestowed upon you and we as a signatory, Australia that is, is as a signatory, um, is bound by that convention while retaining its sovereignty. So the issue of illegal migration is going to um, stay with us for many, many years. You have to look at what happened in Europe and Italy Mm -hmm. um, there's all sorts of things and I think that the issue of illegal is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. Sometimes it becomes a very political issue uh, and it's often sad that uh, there's many devastating cases uh, that, that are forcing people to do these things or think that they yeah, have true. to do these things when there are maybe other avenues that are out mm -hmm. there. But let's talk about the consequences of this illegal migration. Mm. How does it impact the individual and as well as the country that he or she migrates to? Uh, well, it, I suppose it, it doesn't impact Australia 
from where I sit anyway, I'm sure it does in some other ways, but I think that many, many people die in the attempt to cross the oceans and uh, even in the short stretch of land between Indonesia and Christmas Island, mm -hmm. which is not a huge deal, a huge distance by world terms, it's an extremely dangerous set of uh, a bit of piece of water, oh. and there's uh, boatloads of people with you know a hundred on board in a leaky boat, and uh, probably many people die in the process. So uh, I'm never not an advocate of people getting on a boat to go to another country mm -hmm. because the likelihood is that many more people are probably going to perish than actually ever reach the shore, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a very sad state of affairs. Of course, and the, mm. when you speak about the seriousness of this mm. issue, maybe you can tell us in terms of numbers, if you could, uh, how serious this issue was and the current status quo? Uh, look, from a numbers point of view, I, I don't have those figures. They're more like a, an immigration department statistic, mm -hmm. uh, but they yeah. do publish those, so mm -hmm. they're, not, uh, they're not hiding those figures. They do have a lot of statistical publications on the uh, Department of Immigration and Border Protection's website, and anybody can click on there and have mm -hmm. a look at the documents that get published, and they do publish them. Um, in terms of the amount of people that arrive in Australia by boat, oh, I actually don't have those figures, so you've <laughs> caught me on the hop there. Oh dear. Well, yes, <laughs> well, that's, that's, the, that's not good. The, the point is that those figures exist, it's they not exist. zero. Yes. Yeah, it's certainly not zero. It's yeah. certainly not zero. But um, so then again, it's very important for everyone to know what the correct procedure for sure. migration is. Mm. So maybe you can take us through the first step when it comes to the migration process. Okay. So there is a program called the Skilled Migration Program, mm -hmm. and Australia takes around 190,000 is the intake this year. Uh, which is quite a lot when you add yes. on family members, which could be three or four or two or whatever. <laughs> so there could be upwards of a if half. The Sri Lankan family usually three or four, uh, maybe. Yes. And many other countries are, are the same. Okay. So it could be upwards of half a million people entering the country on a migration program. Oh. Uh, it's pretty much strictly built on a skill and on having an English capability. Mm -hmm. So okay. the government says that if you can't speak English to a certain level, uh, and you don't have a recognised skill, that is a, a trade certificate, a diploma or bachelor degree of some description, master's, PhD, then the likelihood is you're not going to get a visa to come into the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's very so, important. Yeah, and the the skilled migration portion of that 190,000, mm -hmm. I think is around 120,000, 130,000. So that's a lot of skilled workers that uh, are coming into the country and starting their new lives. Of course, and what are there any skills in particular that you look out for when it comes to granting the visas to these workers? Definitely, definitely okay. the Australian government produces the skilled occupations list, commonly called the SOL, the S-O-L, okay. and I'm sure many of your uh, viewers today will have, uh, will know that mm -hmm. because it's sort of become the byword if you're looking at Australia then S-O-L, get on the S-O-L. Yeah. Um, See what As kind of skills you got. Yes, skilled yes. occupations list, definitely. And each state and territory also has its own skilled occupations list. So while the federal government has one list, each state and territory has its own. So there's another six states and two territories. So there's another eight lists. Ooh. And on top of that, there are regional areas which also may have their own list. And for instance, if you go into New South Wales, it could have another 12 or 13 regions. So they will also have their own lists. So when we look at occupations, it's almost impossible to tell if you meet a criteria if you're just looking at the skilled occupations mm -hmm, list. Mm -hmm. it may, your occupation may not be on that. Okay. But it may be on one of the other states or territories or one of the many regional lists that it do, do exist. So Australia is a vast country, yeah. is it? it is a continent which is a country. It, very yeah. true, it's uh, commonly known as the world's largest island and yes. if you want to, from a comparative point of view, it covers around 8 million square kilometres. Wow. Now yeah. Sri Lanka I think it was sitting at about 64,000 square <laughs> kilometres. So Australia is really more no than a, it's 100 there? times larger yes. than Sri Lanka yes. uh, with about the same population. Oh wow, yeah, so, so 23 all, that's why you really invite skilled professionals yeah. to come into your country. Of course, and we have uh, a lot of resources, very, very large distances between everywhere. Uh, to fly from Perth to Melbourne is four and a half hours. Uh, I'm from Perth. Mm -hmm. It's quicker for me to go to Singapore. 
<laughs> uh, and certainly much quicker for me to go to Bali okay. or, or Jakarta uh, than it is for me to go to the other side of Australia. So it just demonstrates the, mm -hmm. the length and the breadth of the country. Oh, yes, but you mm. spoke about the skills necessary mm. and as well as the English competency. Mm. But are there any other qualifications, pre-qualifications that you need to migrate to Australia that people should be aware of? Uh, well, p you, to get a visa you need to score points. Okay. Uh, if you are migrating as a skilled migrant, then the magic target is 60. And you achieve that by uh, age, qualifications, English language ability, work experience, uh, and sometimes the states will sponsor. So if the state does sponsor you, they can contribute to your total score. Okay. And if you reach the total score of 60, the magic number, <laughs> The likelihood is that you'll receive an invitation from the government and then you lodge your application and that will then be processed. So once we get to the invitation stage, um, in my experience, it's unlikely, unless there's a medical or a criminal issue, it's unlikely that you won't get the visa. I it, see. it may happen, of course, but it hasn't happened in our business as yet. Oh, wow, mm. okay. So you do, it's a very transparent process and... Very, very much. Okay, and... Uh, I think the, the issues, sorry to cut in on you there, the issues relate to some parts of the process being an objective test and some parts being a subjective test. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean age is objective. You are or you are not. Yes. Uh, you have a degree, you do or you do, do not. not. Yes. Uh, you have an English score of whatever, you do or you do not. The work experience issues come about um, where people claim work experience but actually don't, they can't provide a reference from the business that has been employing them or the reference they do provide doesn't match the occupation that they claim. That's the subjectivity oh, of it. Oh, I see. All right. So and that's uh, when we're looking at points of 10 or 15 points for work experience, it becomes critical that you get these issues correct mm -hmm. when you're looking at your references and when your representative is working out whether you have the ability to migrate to Australia or not. So a lot of things to keep in mind if you are considering starting out on this process. Of course, we'll be asking Peter all other queries as well when it comes to this particular process as well as the correct, the legal method of going about this. That's very important. So stay with us. We'll be right back on Good Morning.